Hey guys, uh, welcome to uh, Confusing Bits. I'm Corey. Uh, let's talk about Coming of Age in Mississippi, the classic autobiography of Growing Up Poor and Black in the Rural South by Ann Moody. Uh, too Long, didn't read, didn't listen. Uh, is This is an important book. Uh, that I think uh, everyone should read. It is just as pertinent uh, as as it was when it, uh, today as when it was written, and it's well written. It's a good read. It is a um, disturbing read, uh, but I think it's very important reminder of, of where we come from, and it's not that long ago actually. So anyway, if you want to learn learn more, uh, uh, stick around. So. Uh, let's do for uh, you need some context so Ann Moody is let's do her little Wikipedia thing uh, Ann Moody was an uh, American author who wrote about her experiences growing up poor and black in rural Mississippi her involvement in the civil rights movement through the NAACP CORE and SNCC that's SNCC Moody began fighting racism and segregation as a young girl growing up in Centerville, Mississippi. Uh, and uh, she was born, uh, just references, Essie May, Essie May Moody. So she's rough in the book, she's called Essie, Essie May uh, uh, throughout it. Uh, but uh, I think there was an issue with her, it's in the book, uh, there was an issue with her birth certificate or whatever, and for whatever it said, Annie. Uh, so uh, I guess she, she decided to go with it <laughs> and went with Anne. So um, I think she liked the name. Uh, but yeah, the uh, uh, the book is autobiographical, meaning uh, that uh, she wrote it about herself. So it's it's a story from when she was a little girl growing up uh, in the South and, uh, you know, in the... Uh, 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 50s, well, 40s, 50s, and 60s. This is Jim Crow. We're talking about Jim Jim Crow era. So this is uh, capital uh, capitalized, capital R institutionalized racism. Um, this is uh, this is uh, there is no microaggressions in this book. This is overt racism. It's seeped through every uh, every page you read about more and more racism or the impacts of racism. Um, so it's like I said, it's it's not uh, it's not a fun read, but I, I Anne does a really good job of, of telling the story. So it's you're you're going for the next page. You want to hear the the next sentence, you know, if you're listening on audiobook. So it's really good. Let's uh, let's do the. Uh, do some blurbs here. So this is the San Francisco Sun reporting. Grossing, sensitive, beautiful, so candid, so on, so candid, so honest, so touching as to make it virtually impossible to put down. And that is that's definitely true. It's just this really engrossing story. Um, written without a trace of sentimental sentimentality or apology, this is an unforgettable personal story. The truth is a remarkable young woman named Ann Movie lived it. To read her book is to know what it is to have grown up black in Mississippi in the 40s and 50s and to have survived with pride and courage intact. In this now classic autobiography, she details the sights, smells, and sufferings of growing up in a racist society and candidly reveals the soul of a black girl who had the courage to challenge it. This results in a touchstone work, an accurate, authoritative portrait of black family in the rural South and moving account of a woman's indomitable heart. Reading this book, I got angry. Um, I'm not prone to <laughs> uh, prone to, to, to such outbursts, but just reading the book, I was just fuming at some of the, the things that were happening. I'm like, how, you know? You just how did how did it how did think how were things that bad? Um, it's just rough, 
rough read. Um, so one interesting note of the book is uh, the book takes place mostly in Centerville, Mississippi, which is where Ann Moody was from. Um, and it immediately hooked me because Centerville, I live in Mississippi, Centerville uh, was right by where my grandmother grew up. So there's a little town called Gloucester right nearby. And that's where my grandmother uh, grew up and we would go there all the time to, to visit. I lived about an hour away in another little town called Summit. Um, uh, so for reference, Centerville, Mississippi today, the population 1,207 in 2001. 2021 is, uh, yeah, 1,207 people in city limits. So that's in city limits. That's another thing you need to know about the, if you, if you, I don't, I don't know how other places work, but here in the South, what happens is you've got the, the cities or the towns has little city limits and very few people actually live in city limits, which is what that number is. Most people live spread out throughout the, uh, uh, throughout the county outside of city limits. Even though they might have an address that says Centerville or whatever, they may not be in city limits of, of Centerville. So we're talking really rural here. You know that that's the the whole gist here. It's a it's a it's a one uh, it, it's your one stoplight town, right? It's got the a gas station. Uh, it's got the dying grocery store from uh, the Walmart that 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 opened up. 30 minutes away um, <laughs> uh, it's got uh, 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 the, the auto shop uh, uh, you know it's, it's just got very bare mental facilities or whatever maybe it's got a, a clinic or something like that um, uh, maybe a dentist office but uh, none of the there's no movie theater you know uh, there's no uh, skating rink there's no uh, 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 <laughs> I don't know what to say. There's no, there's no uh, 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 YMCA, you know. <laughs> you don't have those kinds of things. We're talking about small towns, right? Uh, it was even smaller back then. Um, so, Cerebral, so I had an immediate connection as soon as I started reading the book because, I don't know, people from like big cities, maybe New York or San Francisco, you read about someone who living in New York or San Francisco. I'm sure you've got some connection, but you don't, I don't imagine that you have like a personal, you don't feel like a personal connection to that, that person because there's literally millions of people like living there, right? But we're talking about a few thousand people I probably know somebody who knew Ann Moody. If I if I asked around significantly enough, I probably know somebody who knew Ann Moody. So it was a shocker, you know, uh, to 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 have read that started reading this book. I'm like, oh my god! And she's describing like areas and stuff. I'm like, oh, I know that place, you know. <laughs> um, so it's. I never get that experience. Again, I'm sure people will get that. I know that place, you know, if you live in New York or whatever, but, uh, and you're hearing about something in New York, I'm like, what is it like you watch on TV? You always see the, in New York, they always do the scene with a bridge that goes up under, and uh, it's, I think it's in uh, Central Park or whatever. It had the little bridge and the tunnel that goes up under, and they always do scenes there on TV. And I'm like, I know that place. Um, we don't have that for us rural folk, you know. <laughs> so whenever uh, people start, you know, when I read a book that's describing uh, um, things uh, like places around town, like the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, I'm like, I, I know the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. <laughs> uh, uh, or Centerville Baptist Church. I know the Centerville Baptist Church. Um, so... Or at least I think I do. <laughs> Again, I haven't been over there in like forever, but uh, we we would all get so we didn't go. I didn't live in Centerville or anything, so I don't know a whole lot about it. But it was just so familiar with that area that like I immediately knew the cadence of that whole situation. Right, um, I knew the whole cultural context of that that area like immediately. 
So that immediately hooked me into the book. And then, of course, the book is really compelling. She was a really precocious young child. She was very smart. Um, uh, did well in school. And then uh, 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 so she talks about how uh, after, you know, during that area, like all of the all of the women, uh, a lot of the women, there wasn't like a bunch of industrial jobs or whatever uh, for for people. Were. So most of the women that were the black women worked that would work for a household. That would be like the uh, household maid or whatever cook, uh, and they would they would help around the the house, uh, washing clothes and stuff like that, doing all that uh, housework and stuff like that before we had you know washing machines and. And, uh, and before we, we brought the kitchen in in the house, because uh, used to the kitchen was outside the house or on a separate part of the house, you know. And uh, and uh, so, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, um, seeing how uh, they were working for like a dollar a day or something like that and struggling to 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 make ends meet uh and then and then uh you would have uh the men fooling around with the 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 housekeepers you know the um apparently that was a common thing back in the day and and then having you know mixed children that that nobody owned or uh yeah it was a sad situation all around and then later on during the book uh, so she goes to things kind of really ramp up especially after um the civil rights era kind of like really started uh, activism the nwacp one of the first things the big insight one of the big inciting events i guess you would say was there was a kid that came back in Cerebral, came back to town uh, he was known to be involved with the NWACP, and the boy was just killed, like, as soon as he showed up in town. Like, within, I think, like, within a few weeks, showing up in town. That's how serious things were. So, the, basically, the, the Klan killed him, basically. Um, and, of course, you had the FBI. They'd come by and ask questions, and that's, that's all they would do. They would just ask questions, and then they'd leave, and they'd never do anything. Um, uh, there were several different events. They, they weren't killed outright. There were lynchings where people would just get beat up and then just left on the side of the road or out in the middle of the woods, just beaten to a pulp, you know, to the near point of death, and then uh, left out in the woods, uh, and then nothing would happen from that. Just infuriating stuff uh, to read. And then, uh, so anyway, she, she eventually goes off to, to college, uh, I think she went off to, um, what is this? she went to Natchez Junior College uh, for a while, and uh, uh, and then she went off to Tougaloo College. Once she got, I think she got to Tougaloo College, uh, that's when she, that, that's a, I think that's a historic black, yeah. It's a private, historically black college in, uh, in, in, Tougaloo area of Jackson, Mississippi. I've never actually been to Tougaloo College before. But, uh, yeah, the uh, she went off to Tougaloo, and then she got involved with the AACP, uh, and then she started doing some Activision, uh, 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 Activi Activision, that's a game company. Um, Acti the word is gone. I don't know where it went. <laughs> she got involved in the civil rights movement uh, and uh, and uh, uh, worked in the Canton area, Canton, Mississippi, uh, trying to do voter registrations and getting people to sign up to vote. And they couldn't even get people to sign up to vote because people were getting lynched. Uh, they, of course, you had the, the Jim Crow era voting um, tests that you had to take uh, and almost no one could pass. Uh, if you were black, uh, you would get denied because you 
spelt your you didn't capitalize your name or something or other stupid uh, stupid stuff that you would get, basically preventing people from from voting. Uh, the reason why they had to do that was again she she mentions it like in the book she mentions it she's like look if everybody voted there's like ten blacks for every one white person in Canton in, you know in the county they wouldn't. <laughs> The only way they can maintain control is to keep blacks from voting. So, um, and something I don't, I don't know, maybe a context here. I don't think people really reckon recognize that, especially if you're not from the South. I know the South gets a lot of rap for racism for good reason. Um, this book is a excellent example of one. But racism, racism everywhere. But part of the reason why you hear about you may hear about more racism. This is the way I see it. One of the reasons why you may hear about more racism in, say, Mississippi or Georgia or or, or Alabama or Florida, wherever, is because there's more blacks here than than most other places. It's, it's easy to uh, uh, there's there's less there's less chance there's less interface right uh, uh, than 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 other places. You go like to Wisconsin or whatever, and there's a hundred. Hundred white people for every one black person, and here it's like it's almost even, right? Um, so uh, there's just uh, we still got a lot of ways to go, but uh, I, I, people talking about how you can get more stories about relate race relations here in the South. I don't think anybody here in the South uh, has any. Uh, any anybody with a, a lick of sense here in the South is, is going to say that we we don't have problems with racism down here. But I think places in the North or out West and thinking that they don't have problems with racism, like they just don't have to confront it like we do. I, that's my opinion. Uh, so I, and I think that bears out. You see the shootings going off all over the place, and not necessarily happening in, in the South. Uh, it's all over the place. Uh, so that's racism. But uh, uh, we do still have problems. So like uh, I think most of the, the, the churches down here are still mostly segregated. It's not a rule. It's just all the blacks go to this church. Well, mostly all the blacks go to mostly this church. And the whites go to this church. So we have the black churches and the white churches. Um, and then we have areas of schools, like school district. When I grew up uh, in Pike County, um, I, I went to North Pike County, uh, North Pike School District, which had kind of an even mix of uh, black and white. But if you went to South Pike, most of the blacks lived on the south side of, uh, of, of Pike County, uh, and so it was mostly black. So it was mostly a black, uh, 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 a black school, uh, overwhelmingly black. Uh, so. In that sense, it was a segregated school, right? Because none of the whites, almost very few of the whites actually went to, to South Pike. Um, so there's that kind of de facto segregation, and it's just location based, right? So the schools are integrated now, but are they really, you know? The, the churches are integrated, but are they really, you know? Um, I guess the, the, the key difference is nobody's. You would be shunned and. Uh, hauled out of town if you tried to say no actually uh, black can't come into this restaurant or whatever it's illegal nowadays right <laughs> so um, for good reason but um, but there is a de facto segregation right so that's still a holdover uh, so we still have work to do and I think that the book does a, a good reminder of like how far one, how bad it was and what race, real, real racism. I don't know, uh, there's, uh, racism gets thrown out a lot uh, nowadays and it's used more, slant, it's used more as a slander term, right? Uh, nowadays when you hear racism. This book talks about r honest to goodness racism, right? Uh, Jim Crow racism um, so yeah this is she talks about Uncle Tom's and everything so there's a bunch of dynamics that I had never even considered um, where they wouldn't even trust other black folks sometimes because the black folks 
might be reporting what was going on because they were Uncle Toms or something like that. And that's something, you know, I'd heard the, the term Uncle Tom, but I never realized how it impacted, you know, people's lives uh, back then and like in a real everyday way. And she talks about it as well. Anyway, I, I keep going on with this book. You know, like I'm not an expert on racism. I'm, I'm not a politically correct person. So if I've said the wrong things or whatever, it wasn't intentional. Uh, the, 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 the intention is to, to, to be informative and uh, uh, and it's presented with the, the spirit of uh, charity and love. So uh, I hope you take it that way. So if I've said anything uh, that, that was offensive, it wasn't intentional. So I just want to say that right off the, right the get-go. But um, I do recommend that everyone read uh, The Coming of Age in Mississippi by Ann Moody. And with that, I will see you guys uh, next time. Bye.